really gonna miss you it's really gonna be different without you time is gonna be hot and slow for the rest of my life I'm gonna be thinking about you yes I am In your finest hour, I was there with you, and without you, things won't be the same, but there's a higher power that we answer to, and you heard him calling your name, really gonna miss you. Everything 
everything about you, your smiling face. Yeah. I know you want us all to be strong. I really gonna miss you. I know you've gone to that magic place. Singing you a brand new song. I'll miss you, my buddy. I'll miss you, my friend. I promise my love for you. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight is like yesterday when it is past and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood. They are like a sleep. In the morning, they are like the grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withers. We have been consumed by your anger and by your wrath, we are terrified. You have set our iniquity before you, our secret sins in light of your countenance. For all of our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. The days of our lives are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they are 80 years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. 
So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And have compassion on your servants. O satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen evil. And let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the works of our hands for us. Yes, establish the works of our hands. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely, He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrows that fly by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lies waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plagues come near your dwellings. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. 
to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. On an instrument of ten strings and on the lute and on the harp with harmonious sound for you Lord have made me glad through your work I will triumph in the works of your hands oh Lord how great are your works your thoughts are very deep a senseless man does not know nor does a fool understand when the wicked spring up like grass and when all the workers workers of iniquity flourish it is that they may be destroyed forever but you Lord are on high forevermore for behold your enemies O Lord for behold, your enemies will perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you shall exalt like the wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. My eyes have seen my desires on my enemies. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh with flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. The Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord, he is our God. You may be seated. the children would like to come and watch the casket being closed, you're certainly welcome to step forward.
Brothers and sisters, the Lord has called us together again to commemorate the life and to celebrate the home going of Sister Linda D. Young Powell. To this Young and Powell family, Jeff, please know that you have our prayers now and for days to come. A program has been provided for our guidance. And by the way, I'm Bishop Ronnie Crudup, senior pastor here at New Horizon and not Brother Pastor Kevin D. Waddle. And so I will be officiating today. Brother Hackler will come and be our program guide. The blessings of the Lord be upon you. Amen. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. I said praise to God, everybody. You would think that what all that we have gone through the last two years, someone can stand up and praise God this morning. This is a celebration. We can say thank you, Jesus, for all that he has done for us. We can say thank you for what he has brought us through. Two years ago, we couldn't assemble in this place like we are now. But God has blessed us to come here today and, and assemble and celebrate the life of my mother-in-law, Linda D. Young Powell, she told me years ago we was at a funeral, and after the funeral, she said that um, I, I didn't like that one because it was too long and too sad. So sometimes later, we went to another funeral, and she said that one that was just right, upbeat. So that's what we're gonna do this, this morning. We're gonna we're going to have an upbeat and celebration. We're going to thank God for what he has done. We're going to thank God for Linda's life. How he has put Linda, Linda in our life to bless us and to guide us, and we keep all her, her memories with us and so we can move forward. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Father, this morning. We thank you, Father, for this bereaved family this morning. And, Father, we thank you, Father, for healing, Father, because we know that you are the healer. We know that you are the comforter, Father. Father, whatever they're going through right now, Father, let them look to the hills which come at thy help and our help coming from you. And, Father, just look to you for all your guidance. And, Father, we just thank you, Father, for blessing us for the presence of Linda for these 60-plus years. And we just celebrate you and we worship you this morning. And, Father, we ask that you come inside this place, Father. Let everything that is said and done, let it be to glorify you. And we will always give you the honor and the praise. Thank you. Amen. We will have our scripture reading by the grandson, Demarie Reno. We're going to ask him to come at this time and give us the New and Old Testament. Praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. God is good. God is worthy. Even in tribulation, even in pain, even in your strife, even in even in all the pain, all the hurt, God is still worthy. Even when we don't understand. Come on. Scripture coming from the New Testament first. And we coming from Matthew chapter five. Small verse, but powerful. Verse number four. And it speaks. Blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. God is a comforter, and in this time, we definitely need him. We may not know him like we want to. We may not obey him all the time, but I promise you, he is willing and he is able to comfort you like nobody else can. We can look to each other. We're good that we're all here together, but we definitely need him. He is the comforter. My New Testament scripture will come from Isaiah. Chapter 41, and it reads, Fear not, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I chose both of these scriptures not only because it speaks to not only the validity of Jesus, 
but it speaks to his power. It speaks to his care, his kindness, and his love for us. And so that's why I'm going to leave that is, is the love. And I like to incorporate just grandma. It's my grandma. That's my ace. That's my, that's my grandma. I'm the favorite. Everybody know that. I'm her baby. You know, and you don't know Demaye, but you know Maya. So, <laughs> hey, that's me. But I, I speak to this because grandma loved. That's all she did. Grandma hardly got mad. She hardly fussed. She was, she was a peacekeeper. That's all she wanted to do. She was the glue. That's all she wanted to do was keep everybody together, get everybody together. And so I, I, I encourage you all to just love one another, even through this time. Just love one another because that's what grandma would do, and that's what she would want us to do. Thank you. First met her, Jonathan didn't want me to meet her, y'all. She came to the car and she said, can y'all take it here? And we started talking. I think we talked for hours, y'all. But she was amazing in a short period of time, a year, I think, now it's been a year of knowing her. She was amazing. We talked every day. And she made sure she told me she loved me every day. So she was a sweet person. Y'all knew her longer than me. I knew her in a short period of time and knew she was sweet. Um, so I'm going to sing this song, Secret Place. I love this song because it actually tells you when you're going through something, there's a person you can go to. Sometimes our sisters and brothers and cousins and friends can't hear us. But there is somebody you can go to. His name is Jesus. What do you do when you don't know you can do? What do you say when you said all you can say? Where do you go? Who can you lean on? Where do you turn? I go to my secret place where I worship at his feet. Secret place where he meets my every need. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He will hear your cries. He'll answer by and by. Oh, have a little talk with my Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He will hear your cries. Answer by and by. Amen. Glory in this place. How everybody doing today? So, um, my mother-in-law, what a beautiful and loving woman. I met her in 2001 um, in the pharmacy when she came to visit Tanya. Uh, Tanya and I wasn't dating yet, but little did she know I was going to be her son-in-law. Um, I met her and she said, hey, how you doing? And I can just imagine what she told Tanya when she got in the car. Oh, he's kind of cute. You should go ahead and probably <laughs> get with him. <laughs> I never knew what she actually said, but the first time I actually came home to meet the entire family was in 2003. I got back from deployment, and I was nervous. You know, you, you coming home to meet your 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 fiance, brother, and two sisters, and everybody else, 
and I met Steve, and I was kind of nervous. Had all the guts, warm guts on my side, like, oh, man, you know, the big brother going to make sure I don't do nothing wrong to his sister, and I never have. And so one thing I wanted to say, I was welcomed into the family um, with open arms. My father-in-law um, sat me down and talked to me about all these different things. Say, man, I want to do this, man. Say, man. And it was just just that positive energy and the love that I received. And so I just want to say this as uh, one thing my mother-in-law always told me. Um, we know it makes you take care of my daughter, makes you take care of my grandkids. And I have done that, and I will continue to do that. I'm going to continue to lean on everybody else, too, uh, to help us get through this. But I do got a funny story real quick. Um, we were stationed in Florida. We were taking Sedar and Damari up to South Carolina with, with Stan, uh, dropping them off for this, uh, probably like for a couple weeks in South Carolina. On our way back, we did a turn to burn. My wife, Ruth Tanya, my mother-in-law, and Brianna, she was um, probably about eight months at the time. And um, it was getting dark, and it was late. And so I said, hey, let's go get some energy drinks. So we stopped at the gas station, got two different energy drinks. Uh, a monster and another off brand or whatever it was. By the time we hit the Georgia border, I was like, Tanya, open up that one energy drink. Drink that energy drink. By the time we got to Daytona, I was like, hey, open that other one. And so I had drank them about for like two hours apart from each other. By the time I got to Orlando, I was twitching and sizzling and everything <laughs> else, right? And by the time we got back to Tampa, mama couldn't wait to call Jeff. She said, Jeff, Reno in here bouncing off the wall. He doing everything. He can't sit still. It was about 3 something in the morning. And she said, well, I told him what he should have did. He should have got him a Coca-Cola and been all good. <laughs> and so I'm going to leave on that note. Mama, I miss you. Um, much love to the family. Thank you. And um, we're going to get through this together with prayer and love. Morning, everyone. Um, Linda and I, we have been praying for over 30 years. And I can say that our girls have grew up with my girls, going to Girl Scouts together, going to school together graduating from school together and as Linda Linda you could always catch Linda with a smile on her face no matter when where and what Linda was always one to want to keep the peace every time when I Call Linda, uh, she just got that joy. She has that joy in her. And sometime I call Linda at 10 o'clock at night. We talking on the phone. And that's when she was staying what, uh, over there where I, I, I'm living at now. And um, I asked Linda, Linda, I'm like, uh, what you doing, girl? You in bed? Now, girl, I'm up here frying Jeff some chicken. She, <laughs> she said, girl, she said, you know he got to have his chicken. She said, after a while, he going to be flying like a chicken. <laughs> One thing about Jeff's house, he got to have his chicken, and Linda have to have her Coca-Cola. <laughs> she catch anybody going out there know, hey, Bring me a Coca-Cola back from the store. <laughs> I tell Linda, Linda, you 
you got to cut off on the Coca-Cola slide. I was like, hey, you going to have that bad guy to cry. So, no, that's what happened. <laughs> so, I'm like, Linda, you got to cut off on the, di- on the, on the Coca-Cola. I got to cut off on the cigarette. She said, Jackie, you done stopped smoking yet? I said, no. I said, none of you done stopped uh, drinking Coca-Cola. She said, no, not yet. <laughs> but I tell you. This was a wonderful woman and a wonderful, wonderful friend. You could never, you know, we always say, I would always tell my children, you don't have friends, you know, because friends are so hard to come by. But this lady here, she was a friend. She was a best friend. And this is one that I would miss for a lifetime. And she would always have a special place in my heart. Because I would truly and dearly miss her. I would miss the calls. I just, I'm just going to miss her. And I just love her. Sandra Hill. Right after Sandra, we have David speaking as a family member. Then we have as a neighbor, Judy Lambert. And then we have Brother Gary going to speak behind them. So we come in that order. I would just like to say, give an honor to God for being here. I thank him for that. To this great pastor, this wonderful church. Uh, I am Sandra. Uh, Linda and I have been friends about 51 years. We were 12 years old. Uh, all our, we were pregnant at the same time. All our, you know, all our, you know, all my children, I know all our children. Uh, this is, I'm going to miss her. I just want you all to know that I, I believe that she's in a better place. And uh, I believe she's in a better place. And, uh, you know, I just want you all to be strong. And uh, I appreciate you all for giving me this opportunity to come up here and speak. And I want you to know that I'm not going to miss Linda so much. Thank y'all. Good afternoon. My Aunt Linda, I heard one of the grandsons say he was the favorite grandson. Well, I'm probably the favorite nephew, I'm pretty (laughs) sure. My Aunt Linda, there were four beautiful women that my grandmother had, but there's no doubt my Aunt Linda was the fox. She was a diva. (laughs) And... You don't have to look real far to see it. I see some of these grandkids, and I'm like, Lord have mercy. Jeff, you and Linda put your mark all over these kids. But my Aunt Linda, one of the things I can say I remember the most about her that for me was very aspiring was that she was what I consider a ride or die. She loved her some Jeff Tyler. (laughs) And it is what it is. (laughs) They went through some ups and downs, but no matter what and through it all, she wasn't leaving her husband. She loved her husband. And and for me, that 
that speak volumes of a true wife that is a ride or die. Michelle, Jeffrey, Jonathan, Tanya, and Loretta. This is just one chapter. It's not the end. The book hadn't closed. You got another opportunity to see this woman. Get your life in order. Don't let this be a moment to pass by. Months from now, you forget. And be an encouragement to these grandkids. Show them the love that your mom showed all of us. These people are not in here for nothing. Y'all mama had an impact on these people's lives, and that's why you see these people in here. Take that with you and do the same thing that she did. I love you guys, and we all love us and Linda Powell. First thing I'm going to say, I'm going to miss Linda, the minister, because of the fact that we were so nosy all through the night. She going to holler, Judy, did you see that? I said, no, did you see it? And she, uh, we uh, talk about it all through the night when she uh, watching TV. I have got eyes on the same panel she had. Oh, what he been to do now? Where, oh, man, he done got killed. That was some of them shows we watched at night. Me and her, and Jeff Powell butted in a lot of time. And Lord, can y'all go to sleep? But it wasn't no sleep for her. It was just only in the morning, only in the morning. Me and Linda, we rode together a many times. I went down in McGee looking for a puppy. Linda rode with me. I said, a lady said it was in this little town here. We got down there, one of them little general stores. We stopped and asked somebody where the street at. They said, there's not such a thing as this particular street. We came down too far. After we did all that, we seen two ladies in a truck. It just parked side the road. We was all down in the country, far off in there. And London, I said, London, what they doing in that truck? She said, I don't know. I said, that's the KKK. She got down and started. She said, Judy, go on. Just drive. I look around. I said, I'm looking too. You look to the left, I'm looking to the right. <laughs> and I mean, we really did that. And then we <laughs> we went to the boat one night. The, yeah, we did. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the machine went off. And London was just hollering, I won, I won, I won. And I looked at the machine. I said, London, they ain't for $5. And she just hollered about that. And I said, well, now. She was so glad. And I said, look, the next time I take you to the boat, don't you open your mouth. If you hit something, don't say a word. Just get on the phone and call me, and I'll come over there and get it. But I love Linda, though. I really do. And uh, I mean, me and her were doing some stuff. Jeff Powell said, go on with your buddy. Go on with your buddy, your buddy. I said, that's, she said, that's fine. I'm going with my buddy. But Nana, through it all, her and Jeff stuck with me when my mother passed. And they knew I wasn't able to take it, so they walked me up and down Grand Avenue. Then they, Jeff said, let's go up through Jackson State. Let's take up Jackson State. I said, where we going up Jackson State? I said, I ain't walking that far. Nana said, you can do it. I said, uh-uh. So we sit down and rest, and we didn't even make it up to Jackson State. But like I said, Lana has stuck with me every night. She going to call me and say, Judah, how you doing? How you feeling? And I said, I don't know, Lana. Because especially when I had my brain surgery, and Lana and Jeff were very cautious of that. They checked on me every night. Lana uh, talked. She said, if you want me to come over and stay with you till you start feeling better, 
I said, no. Nah. I said, but I do need a BC. She said, do you have a coat? And I, she had a BC. We were walking back and forth. We would meet in the middle of the street. I give her a BC. She had the coat, but she'd give me the BC, and I have the coat on the full. But uh, we did that. Like I said, <laughs> Linda was a true friend. She really was. I mean, we talked about everything, anything, all night long. But Linda really loved her children. They was her heart. She took her children more so at you know, a point to where I asked, Jeff said, well, what about me? You loving all the children, what about me? But like I said, she she was set, her heart was just set where it was. And she I know she loved me because I love her because we'll tell each other, I love you, I love you at night when we go to bed and stuff. But anyway, like I said, I'm mess up from staying up being nosy and see who done jumped in somebody one or uh, who girl, did you see that car go around there? Jeff called me, said, Judy, look across the street and see if you see a black truck go across my yard. I said, I can't tell. I said, wait a minute. I said, let me see the camera rolling. I said, I see, I think I see it. She said, look, look, Judy, and see where did he come from, the back or the front? I said, that black truck came around there. I said, I see it. She said, you done picked it up on the camera. I said, I'm telling y'all everything I see. And she said, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I said, no, no, get you a camera. She said, you got one bigger than <laughs> for everybody. I ain't got to have no camera. <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't have to have no camera. But like I said, I just, I love the Kyle family. They have been gracious to me and everything. And uh, Lord, I know we're we going to get through this, the bottom line. Michelle, Loretta, and Jeffrey, and Tanya. We're going to get through it. And I didn't leave out. Did I leave out Jonathan? I'm sorry. But anyway, like I said, let's just um, stay in prep, stay prayerful, and stay strong, each one of y'all. Y'all need me? Call me. I'm going to come running. I'm going to do just like I did to mama. We're going to be nosy together again. Y'all take her place and get in where you fit in. All right. Thank you all. I promise I ain't going to be long. It's, 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 a, it's a million things I can say. But it's just uh, to Loretta, Tanya, Jeffrey, Michelle, uh, Jonathan, and all. Big Jeff out of all things. Big Jeff. Big, uh, me and Linda and Jeff and the kids and the family, we go way back. We just, I could just, it's a, it's a, ooh, a ton of things I could say about Linda and I and the kids. But I just wanted to get this part out, this right here. But I will never forget that when we was younger and she used to, she used to get the books and get the stamps and we get the stamps and the kids didn't want to spend the food stamp. They was ashamed to go in there. But me and Shell and Loretta, we're going on in the store. We're going to go on and we're going to go and spend us and get whatever we want. She gives us the whole book. And I told her, I said, you give me five ones. I don't need the book. I'm going on. We're going to go and buy some snacks. <laughs> but I like to get me a jungle juice with three donuts. And, 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 and uh, Linda, one thing Linda always wanted to tell me, she said, Gary, don't you forget my BC and the Coca-Cola. I said, bring me two Coca-Cola back, too. And she never let us forget that Coca-Cola and that BC. But I just wanted to say to the family, keep your head up. And now's the time that we all stitch together like always as family. One thing about Linda, Linda did love all you. She loved everyone. She kept love in her heart. And Big Jeff, out of all things, you know one thing, that was your heart, that was your angel. She stood by you through anything, no matter what nobody say. That's her Jeff and the kids too. Love the family. Keep your head up. Keep God in your heart and trust him. He got you. I promise you God got you. Amen. Hello, everyone. Not on the program, but I had to come up here. 
Jeffrey is my cousin. Doll, cousin Doll, thank you so much for you having Jeffrey. And I thank Jeffrey for bringing Linda into our family. Linda, my Uncle Rodney, uh, Linda would always come by my grandmother. And she called her Aunt Doe, Aunt Doe, Aunt Doe. They talked and everything. So Rodney said one day about Linda, he thought Linda was our cousin. He didn't know it was Jeffrey because Linda was family. It wasn't Jeffrey's wife. It was Linda, our cousin. Linda had five kids. I had two. Linda kept my kids a lot of times. She would call and say, bring them babies. I'm like, really? Pew, I'm gone. When I would come back to get her, you don't have to really. I'm gone again. I have never saw a person that you can call. She's going to start with Michelle. She's going to tell you all about Michelle. She's going to go Jeffrey. She's going to tell you all about what Jeffrey's doing. Latanya, Loretta, Jonathan. She's going to bring up all her grandkids, every last one of them. I didn't forget some of the names. I never saw someone with so much love for her kids and her grandkids. And Jeffrey, oh, my God, she loved him so much. But Jeffrey would say, them little power kids, them little babies. She loved them. They had five kids. They didn't have a whole lot, but they had a whole lot of love. But she never denied her kids with anything. When Michelle got pregnant with Felicia, I heard her say, tell Jenny and Lynn, I'm like, what is Jenny and Lynn? She made sure that baby had the best in everything. I'm like, how did she do it? She did it. I mean, she pulled rabbits out of hat for those babies. She loved each and every last one of them. At the repast last night, I was watching the video. I said, my God, look at all these memories. Seemed like she was there for everything. But Tanya, everything, she, she was there for every birthday, every occasion, she was there. So, unfortunately, all of us have to go. So when you think of your mom, think about the memories. Me as the mother, grandmother, I don't want you all crying every day. I don't want you mourning. That, look at the pictures. Think about the funny things. And it's another thing I'm going to let you go. Uh, little Jeffrey was at my house all the time when they was up all the time. He was like my little son. I didn't have a boy. So one day, Jonathan came. Jonathan wanted to come. He was always like the baby. So Jonathan came one day, and he was in there, and they were about to leave. And he looked over on my floor, and he looked, and his eyes said, Jonathan, you got a kid. Come to him. He said, could I have a friend? I said, huh? I need a friend for my mama. I said, a drink? <laughs> a drink. He said, so little Jeffrey said he wants a Coca-Cola for my mama. I said, oh, so not only did she love her kids, her kids love her because he was looking out for his mama. You know, baby, you were serious about them Coke. And he loved them Coke, and he was just as happy to take his mama to Frank. <laughs> okay, that's it. You want to say something? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Just me and you I feel so lost Cause I don't know what to do 
Disappointing you, so I need to talk to you and ask you for your guidance, especially today when my life is so cloudy. Guide me until I'm sure I. strong for me.
really gonna miss you It's really gonna be different without you Time is gonna be hot and slow For the rest of my life I'm gonna be thinking about you Yes, I am Time came when you had to go I'll miss you, my buddy I'll miss you, my friend In your finest hour, I was there with you, and without you, things won't be the same, but there's a higher power that we answer to, and you heard him calling. Everything about you, your smiling face. Yes. I know you want us all to be strong. Really gonna miss you. I know you've gone to that magic place. Singing you a brand new song Oh, my God.
church say? Church say, 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 all we needed was a word from the Lord. We've got it so. Let the church say, 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 oh, let the, church let the whole church say, 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 God has spoken. Well, 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 let the church, let the church say, let the church say. Dreams about to die, knowing that God is not a man, He just can't lie. In spite of what, what the devil does, no, you've got a word that is You can put a picture in there next week. Cause you got it. <laughs> That's why I said she can ha she can have a picture next week. Oh, what? Oh. Uh, this you? This y'all? It's exactly what I thought it was. I thought.
people. All right, here we go. That was nice, y'all. That was very good, thank you. They're going to sing a song because I heard she don't like a, a sad funeral. That's what I heard. So if y'all know this song, I want y'all to sing it with me. I want y'all to sing it with me. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. He's able. He's able. I know that he can do it. He said he helped me through it. He's able. He's able. He's able. know that he can do it. He said he'll help me through it. Hold on, my brothers. Your change is going to come. Be strong, my sisters, for your work is not done. Just keep on believing and hold on tight. He's able to give you joy in the morning light. He's able. He's able. He's able. Mm -hmm. I know that he can do it. He said he'll help me through it. Hold on, my brother. Your change is going to come. Be strong, my sisters, for your work is not done. Just keep on believing and hold on tight. He's able to give you joy in the morning light. He's able. is able through anything, any situation, any circumstance. He is able. She's in a better place. She's in a better place. In Jesus' name, amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, if you open up your programs, there's an insert. My mother-in-law came up to Ohio uh, to witness my wife's um, promotion and recognition ceremony. And one thing she said, she wished she had an opportunity to stay up there with us a little bit longer. So this is her message to all of us, a message from heaven. It's not easy for me to watch you cry. I'm no longer there to wipe the tears from your eyes. I know that you are. I know that you miss me, but God has something for me to do. I may be in heaven, but I still miss you too. I know that you are hurting as I watch you weep. I wish that I could comfort you and help you find some sleep. Yes, I'm in heaven, but I'm never far away. I'm in your heart and soul with every passing day. As I look down from heaven, I can feel your pain. It will be a joyous reunion the day we meet again. I hope you sleep well tonight. I'll be watching over you. I just wanted to let you know that I still love you. Certainly, we, uh, we praise God for the privilege to be here to commemorate and celebrate the homegoing of Sister Linda D. Young Powell. Once again, to, to Jeff and to the children and the grandchildren and siblings and this entire family. You have our prayers now and for days to come. Amen. I want to call your attention briefly to a passage of scripture out of the book of Revelations, chapter 2. And I want to read a couple of verses and then I want to uh, I want to share a message and kind of personalize it to the children and the grandchildren and, and everybody else that is here as we celebrate this life. Uh, the scripture says in the book of Revelations chapter 2 and verse uh, 10 and 11, hear you the word of the Lord. It says, do not fear any of these things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Then verse 11 particularly, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. The word of God for the, the people of God. Once again, to, to this family, and um, um, actually, I had an opportunity a number of occasions to meet Linda. I knew Jeff from the neighborhood. And, um, and Yolanda is a part of this church. To the children and to the grandchildren especially and, and everybody else, 
I want to share something with you that the Lord said to me when my mama went to heaven. The Lord said to me, he said, it's all right to leave when you got somewhere to go. And, you know, we want folk to stay here forever. But the reality is this life is cruel to us because life breaks down. Health breaks down. And, and, and even though all of us would like to live to be 100, the truth is, our bodies really weren't made to hang in there as a typical deal that long. And, and so, particularly when you start getting a certain age and you start experiencing a lot of bad health issues and things like that, then even though, once again, we... Uh, we want folk to, to stay here, but do we want people to stay here in the midst of hurt and pain and the aggravations of life? And that was my situation with my mother. I was watching her, and I was watching her deteriorate and, and you know, loved her to death. Um, but I was also looking at the situation of of the pain and the suffering and all of these things. And as I was pondering that and, 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 and talking to God in the midst of it, God said to me, I know you want your mama to stay here. He said, but do you want, want her to stay here in the midst of this kind of circumstance? And he said to me, listen, it's all right to leave when you got somewhere to go. And so I tell people all the time that whenever I talk about my mother, and I, I encourage folks as we even talk about the people of God, I will tell folk I never use the lost word because that's kind of our tradition. So often we will say, you know, we lost mama the other day. You know, we, we lost daddy. We lost so-and-so and so-and-so. And I understand what people are saying, but the Lord really spoke my heart and said, you know, you only lose things you don't know where they are. And when you know where your loved one is, and I know where my mama is, then I never speak in terms of loss. And so I tell folk, listen, my mama went to heaven. She, she went on to glory. She passed from this life to the next one. I never say we lost her. And the scripture says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so I always encourage folk, be careful of how you talk because so often your reality, your experience comes down to how you talk. And so as a man thinks, so he's going to talk. And when you know that mama or your loved one knew Jesus as Savior and Lord of that life, and when you, you understand the Scripture says to be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord. Hallelujah. And when you understand that the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. In fact, it said it ain't even entered the mind the wonderful things that God has prepared for us. Then the reality is you understand that as the sister said a little earlier, that listen, that place where mama's gone to is so much better than this one. There's a reason ain't nobody left and come back here.
because that other place is so wonderful. Hallelujah. That they don't want to come back here. You say, but they love me. Well, that love says to you, come over here. I, I know this is a, a funeral, but would you look at the person next to you and say, when you leave, where are you going? The folk over there saying, listen, come over here. Come over here to the land of the living. You know, we, 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 we got all these little sayings we say, and, uh, uh, and, and, and one of those sayings is we say, oh, I'm so happy for one more day in the land of the living. And I tell folks, this ain't the land of the living. I know we say that, but that's wrong. This, this ain't the land of the living. This is the land of the dying. The land of the living is where Lindy is now. The land of the living is where my mother is now. That's the place where folk never die again. There is not even any more night there. No more sorrow there. The land of the living. In our scripture lesson of, uh, uh, of today, in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, uh, I wanted you to hear something here because in this particular passage, the Scripture talks to us about, once again, what's required to go over there. And what's required to go over there is faithful living over here. Amen. Because what the Scripture is saying is you can't just live any old kind of way. You can't live like there ain't no God, there ain't no heaven. Listen, you can't live just any old way and expect that God's going to tolerate things. He's going to do whatever you think you want to do. The reality is when you really understand life, you understand it really ain't about us. And we sure don't have no control. And so the Scripture says, be faithful unto death, and I will give you what? The crown of life. And then in verse number 11, he says something really, really powerful. He says, he that has an ear, let him hear. We're here to celebrate Linda's life, but we're also here to hear. We're also here to check ourselves. Because, because once again, uh, God causes us to to commemorate and celebrate each other's life so we can get in touch with our own mortality. Because the reality is, listen, none of us are immortal on this side. And we need to be reminded that, listen, this day is also going to come for us. And when this day comes, the question becomes, where are we going? Amen. Because heaven is a prepared place, glory to God, for prepared people. Now, now everybody here, you can quote this one with me. You know, you know, you know John 14. Uh, in my Father's house, there are many what? Mansions. Jesus said, if it were not so. So Jesus said, not only there are many mansions, I ain't lying. He says, because in my Father's house, many, and if it were not so, I would have what? Told you. In fact, he says, I go to prepare a place, what? For you. Look, look at that person next to you. You can say, are you included in that? Actually, look at that. Say, you included? Because Jesus said, I went to prepare a place for you. Wow, wouldn't that be awful that there's some, some mansions being prepared that's vacant in heaven? Because you couldn't receive? Come on, come on. You know folk all the time that can't receive. I don't care how good the blessing is, you can't get it because you can't what? You can't receive. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I come and prepare a place for you, I'll come what? Back. I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, what? There you may be also. See, we're here today celebrating that Jesus came back. He came back for Linda. He came back for my mother. Those that are his, he comes back for them. 
finally, the scripture says, he who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. I end with this. You know, so often we define death as an end, but that's not the way the Bible defines it. The Bible never defines death as an end because if the death was in, an end, you couldn't have two of them. The Bible says there's a first death and there's a what? Second death. Then if the Bible doesn't define death as an end, how does the Bible define death? Well, the Bible defines death as separation. The first death is the separation of the body and the spirit or soul. The body goes back to the ground. The spirit goes back to God. Hallelujah. And so, so glory to God. Every one of us is going to experience the first death. But it's that second death you got to be really concerned about. Because if the first death is a separation of body and spirit, what is the second death? The second death is the separation of of your spirit from God. My brothers and sisters, that's what's called hell. Not just a place called hell, but that's real hell. To be separated from God. He said, well, Bishop, what do I need to do to avoid the second death? I'm glad you asked the question. The scripture says, be faithful unto death. The scripture says, have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Not just go to church, but have a relationship with Jesus Christ. A relationship where he would know you and you would know him. Glory to God. The scripture has a little story in it as I close this message today about some folks that came to Jesus and said, Lord, Lord, did we not this, that in your name? Didn't we do this? He said, yeah, you actually did all that, but what was one problem? I didn't know you. So often there are people who know about the Lord, but they don't know the Lord. Don't let that be you. Don't be one of them folk, oh, I know about the Lord, I know about the church, but I don't really know the Lord. I'm not really a part of the body of Christ. Because this day is going to come for all of us. And when it comes for you, glory to God. When I was, a, I was a boy, they don't do this no more. When I was a boy, that was a little game that we used to play called hide and seek. And uh, Jeff is other day, we used to play that kind of game. And in hide and seek, you would say, you go hide, and then the person will say, ready or not, here I come. You know what the Lord is saying? Ready or not, here I come. If you're wise, you're ready. Be ready, because he's coming back. And when you're ready, everything else takes care of itself. Final thing to the children and grandchildren. It's tough right now. But I tell folks, you know what? It's going to get better. There is not a day that goes by that I don't think about my mom.
Now, this is an interesting experience. I don't try to think about it. My mama's been dead for years now. I don't try to think about it. She just show up. You hear what I'm saying? Sometimes she'll show up. It's a smell. Sometimes I'll be somewhere and something remind me of something she used to cook. Sometimes it's a sound. Somebody here say something and it reminds me what mama used to say. You know, sometimes this or that. And then sometimes she just, just show up and then she just popping in my mind. And I'm not grieving her. In fact, I'm celebrating her because I would have no life without her. And because I know where she is and because I am on my way to where she is, then I can deal with this life looking forward to a great reunion. Let's pray. Father, in the wonderful and strong name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for the life of Linda. Thank you for who she was and who she still is. Thank you for a relationship with Jesus Christ that makes life different for all eternity. Touch and comfort this family and... Uh, Help Jeff and the children and grandchildren, this entire family, as they walk through this valley. Oh, God, do what only you can do. Because you said that you could give a peace that surpasses all understanding. Now, Lord, today as we commemorate Linda and celebrate our home going, Lord, that's somebody here today that doesn't know you. They don't have a relationship with you. They know about you, but they don't know you. And if they died today or tomorrow, they wouldn't go to heaven. Because, Lord, they don't know you. They've lived like it's all about them. They think they're in control. But, Lord, they've heard me today. And it's caused them now to look at their life. And, Lord, they understand they got to change it as you caused every one of us to come to that place to understand we got to change it. And so, Lord, touch them right now and help them to make that next step to get their life right with you so that they can walk this life faithfully and be prepared for the next one. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed. And my brother and sister, I'm not going to do anything that would embarrass you. But if you know you are here and you know you're that person that really doesn't know Jesus. Once again, you know about him, but you don't really know him. You've never given him your life. Then listen, I got good news for you. The good news is you can get it right right now. You can receive eternal life right now. And all it takes is an earnest cry, a sincere request. So I'm about to pray a prayer. And if that's you, and once again I said I wasn't going to do anything to embarrass you. But if that's you and you know you now need Jesus. Then you can pray this prayer with me. And if you ask him to come into your life, forgive you of your sins and save you, that's exactly what he will do. Once again, as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, and ain't nobody looking, but at this point, the angel. I'm about to pray this prayer, and if that's you, you can pray this prayer with me. And by the way, you can pray this prayer out loud, or you can pray this prayer loud in your mind, because the Lord can hear your thoughts as well as your mouth. 
So if that's you, then just pray this with me. Just, just say, Jesus, come into my life. Tell him, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And even as you say that, if a certain thing started coming to mind, you say, oh, Lord, yeah, all of that, oh, that, oh, God, all that stupid stuff. Just say, Jesus, cleanse me by your blood. So tell him, Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, forgive me for my sins. And tell him, Jesus, save me. That's right. Jesus, save me. Now tell him, thank you, Lord, for getting it right. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed and ain't nobody looking but the angels and me. If you pray that prayer for the first time today and really meant it, and once God told you, I'm not going to do anything to embarrass you. But if you pray that prayer for the first time today and really meant it to get your life right with him, just slip your hands up so I and the angels can see it. That's you. God bless your heart. You can put your hands back down. Every head is still bowed and every eye is still closed. If you didn't lift your hand, you knew you should have. And you knew you should have prayed that prayer, but you didn't because uh, something just kind of was a struggle started going on inside of you. Kind of like you were wrestling. I need to ask you a question. What do you think that was? Or even better, who do you think that was? Because who you're wrestling with? Because God wants you. Well, you just experienced the devil. Because the devil don't want to lose you because you've been a good soldier of his. And he knows he's about to lose you. And he's trying everything he can to keep you from getting honest with Jesus. But what you got to do with the devil is you got to do him like Jesus did. You got to say to him, get behind me, Satan. You done stop me and mess my life up, but you ain't going to make me miss this blessing. So just tell him, get behind me. And I'm about to pray this prayer again. And if that's you, then come on, take this opportunity and pray this prayer with me. Just pray this. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Jesus, cleanse me by that amazing blood of yours. Tell him, Jesus, save me. That's right. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me for my sin. Jesus, save me. Now, thank him. Lord, thank you for another chance. As every head is bowed, everybody's closed. Ain't nobody looking but me and the angels. If you took the opportunity that second time to pray that prayer, slip your hands up right quick, if that's you. Oh, God bless your heart. You can put your hand back down. Father, we thank you so much for the people who lifted their hand and prayed that prayer. May you do exactly what they pray, come into their life, cleanse them from every sin, past, present, future. God, save them. Write their name in the Lamb's book of life. Holy Spirit, move into their life now and begin to be with them and walk and talk with them every day for the rest of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. You can lift your head. As the funeral directors come, listen, I saw about 50 hands went up in here to pray that, that they prayed that prayer. And so we celebrate that. And Master, I pray that you would put these 50 or so people to Linda's account that at her homegoing service, she became an evangelist and helped draw people unto you. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's worth clapping about. <laughs> to those folks that pray that prayer, here's the last thing I would say to you as these ministers come. Um, here's what you do. Sometimes in the next day or so, find you somebody you don't consider a hypocrite. Come on, you know, you know some folk ain't playing no games. Find them and tell them what you did, that you gave your life to Jesus. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to celebrate with you. 
And then find you a good Bible-believing and teaching church and go be faithful. Now, there's a few hypocrites there, but you ain't there for them anyway. Don't worry about it. But let God bless your life. If you don't know no place, you're certainly welcome to come here. There are other good places. God bless your heart. Listen, if we can have some ladies who want to bear some flowers for us, if you would come and help out. We don't want to be sexist. Some men can come bear some flowers too if you want to. Okay? And help. Amen. As everybody stands in this place. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I'll see. 